You can have every single thing that you want in life as long as you believe it to be so. Let's talk about how important that is and why I fully believe I know that you can have everything and everything can be perfect, everything can be good, and nothing has to go wrong. Thanks so much for joining me for another episode of the Inspired Love, Life, and Business Podcast. My name is Nin Din. I'll be your host, and I'm here to remind you that you are never alone in any struggle that you face, and you absolutely deserve to live the best life possible in all aspects. All right, so when I say that you can have every single thing go well, you can go good in life. And as long as you fully believe it, there's no need for anything to go wrong. I initially learned about this concept in the book, The Big, De- the Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. And the concept to me is still sometimes overwhelming because it's so huge. We are fed the information through media and entertainment to tell us when something is going really good, when life is going so great, or there's an experience or a moment that is just so beautiful and wonderful that at some point, something's going to go wrong or your life will come crashing because you experienced this moment of euphoria. The book, The Big Leap, talks about how if we deserve and believe that we deserve goodness and happiness and all of these beautiful things that can happen to us, there is not a need for anything to go wrong. And the reason why negativity comes along or the reason why bad things happen is because we subconsciously attract it to ourselves when we think or worry about all of the things that can go wrong. And I understand that not everyone can believe this concept. I understand that this is hard for some people who are in tough times. And that makes sense because when things get hard, we tend to do what? We have these inner conversations with ourselves and dig our hole even deeper. I'm a terrible person. I can't believe I did that. If only I did this, if only I had all the tools, everything that we start to tell ourselves tend to be negative. So it goes deeper and deeper and we attract more and more of the negative and you feel like you can't get out. But I've been there and I'm telling you, that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, a light that can shine forever and ever in goodness. And even when something happens that can be viewed as a negative, there is something to be taken away from it for you to look back and say, I am so grateful that this happened. This journey has taken me to be able to see all of the beautiful things that I have in life, things that I can be grateful for, that maybe back several years ago, I would look at it and say, I can't believe this is happening to me. This is awful. Why me? And be the victim. I want to share a story of something that happened to me last year that I am now so grateful for. Whereas in the moment, it was so hard on me, so hard on me. And had I not done the mental work that I had previously, I, I, I am not sure that I would have made it out in the way that I did. And so let's, let's give more context behind this. So I had my son in September and, uh, I know that you're thinking how awesome, congratulations. I'm so excited for you. And because I would be thinking the same thing if you share that story and I say, thank you so much. We're doing wonderful And um, I'm just, I'm so grateful for him and for me, for this journey, for my family, for everyone who supported me throughout this process. But after I had my son, we went home as a happy family and 
immediately I had to go back. I spent a day and a half at home in excruciating pain. I could barely move and, and even walk. I had to hold a pillow to my belly to just hold back the pain. And I, I am a big wuss. I, I can't tolerate a lot of pain, but even in those instances, I really tried to be brave because I wanted to be there for my family and enjoy my time back home and go back to regular life. That's what you try to do after you have major surgery, of course. But when this happened and I had to go back to the hospital, I was convinced by my family to say, this is not normal. There's something wrong because you're, you can't, you're not going back to normal life. I had two other children and I've had major surgery before uh, with them and I hadn't experienced this situation. So I had to go back to the hospital. It ended up being a nine day experience without my newborn. And I, there's, there's a lot of feelings around that. And I haven't shared that experience because I hadn't been ready. I didn't know really how to communicate it and how to share it and around what message I wanted to send. And I wanted to fully encapsulate my feelings around it all because I've left with gratitude and I closed out my year in such a beautiful way after experiencing something that I had never experienced in my life. I am candid to the people who know me and share that I am been I have been very, very fortunate in my life to not have had to go to the ER or to the hospital for anything major. I've never broken a bone. Knock on wood. I, <laughs> but that goes back to my experience of believing that I deserve to have goodness and, and strength and happiness and joy in every moment of life. And just because I'm experiencing a strain, a huge strain of goodness does not in any way mean that I have to come crashing. Because as humans, we were put on this earth for a reason. And deep within us, in our core, in our heart, is the ability to be happy. The innate ability to be happy and to connect with our community and find meaning in relationships. And because I understand that so much better now, the situation that happened with me after having my son and staying in the hospital and having to go through several days of not taking in any foods, any liquids, any solids, none of that. It was called... NPO. The point is I couldn't take anything. I, I couldn't have ice cubes. That's all I wanted was little ice chips. I couldn't drink any water. I'm a huge water drinker and I definitely couldn't eat anything. And the reason being was I had a blockage in my intestine. So that blockage caused dilation of my cecum and it was at a level that hadn't been seen before by my surgeon in someone my age. And if you've been following me for a while, you'll know I'm in my 30s. I turned 35. And uh, it w- when that this happened, I was 34. So the experience for me was brand new. I did not in any way expect to be back in the hospital after having my son. For me, it was, I've done this before two times <laughs> Everything's been wonderful. I'm totally a veteran at this. We've got this. I'm going to have my surgery. My family's going to come visit. I'm going to enjoy. Everything's going to be wonderful. And I'm going to go home. We're going to have a delightful experience at home where I get to recover for the next six weeks. That's what I saw. And that's what I anticipated to happen. That was not what happened. And my experience back at the hospital brought so much light and clarity to my purpose. And when I say my purpose, I mean, I made so many connections with the people that supported me at the hospital. The staff there were wonderful. Oh my goodness. I can't say enough about the nurses and the doctors and how everyone cared for me. It 
it was so delightful in a time where I felt so weak, where I felt so out of control in terms of I didn't know what was going on with me when I would heal, when I would get better, when I would be able to go home to see my newborn son. And all of that was made better by the relationships that I built with my nurses and the people who cared for me. They were just so there. They were so understanding and they gave so much of themselves and made me feel like literally I was the only person that they had to care for, that they chose to care for, that the experience was so delightful. And on top of that, my sister wanted to be there for me the entire time, which actually brought us so much closer. I can't think of a time where my sister and I have been closer than the times that I experienced at the hospital, which is very interesting because I feel like subconsciously that initiated where I am today in wanting to strengthen the relationships that I have with the people around me. And that's another subject for another time. The point being, I had this really deep experience last year that could have been catastrophic. And I could have saw that as why me? Why am I the only one who has to deal with this? Why am I alone? Why am I so young to have to go through this? Why am I not at home with my newborn son? This is so unfair. But that wasn't what went through my head. It's so interesting because still there were absolutely times where it was very painful to not be at home with my newborn, getting to know him. But at no time did I feel like a victim. At no time did I feel like this was torturous or that I was undeserving. I saw the entire experience as something that I couldn't understand, but I knew that there was a purpose to it all. And I could see and be grateful for everything that I had. I was reminded of the way that my parents show up for me, the way that my children's school were there to help through the entire process and be more than I could have ever asked. The fact that the nurses and the x-ray technicians and everyone in the hospital organization showed up for me and just made me feel like I was at home, even though obviously I wasn't. The whole experience made me remind me myself of my purpose and my purpose is to be that light and to be able to share my story and my experiences to remind others that sometimes we will struggle sometimes we will experience things that feel and it feels heavy but you are never alone in those moments I am never alone in those moments And I'm here to serve that reminder that there is someone out there who will understand if you are willing to have that conversation, if you are willing to open that dialogue and share and say, once you're ready, once you're ready, it will always be once you're ready, because this is, there's not ever a moment in life that you are forced to share your story when it doesn't feel good to you. Your story being the good, the bad, the negative, the beautiful, whatever you feel in the moment that you are called to share. So I get reminded of this because people will ask me, what is it that you do? I go back to, I just want to bring joy. I want to leave things better than I found them. And that also means my experiences with people. When I meet someone, I a late in the fact that I get to find some a commonality or something that I can say, wow, I love this about you, or I love that you do this, or I love how I feel when you say, or are in my space, you say this or that. And all of that, I'm so grateful for. I love to find the light and the bright and the goodness in everything that I experience. But it wasn't always like this. It wasn't always like this. There were times in my life where I did completely feel like the victim, where every day was a struggle, where I had no sense of self-worth because I didn't see any value in who I was or where I was. But this journey that I took, I was able to go through because other people were supportive and sharing their stories of struggle that I could take and learn from. And because of other people sharing their stories and because of other people 
being open enough to share their struggles and their experiences and how they overcame them. I am here today in an open and loving and compassionate way to be able to take in stories and the things that happen around me and view it from a really beautiful light so that it serves me no matter what the situation, no matter what you're going through, what your struggle looks like, there is someone out there who understands you, who has been there, who can help you through it. At the same time, if you help to share your story, you can help somebody else who feels alone and feel like they're struggling and they can't get out of it. But you have, other people have. And if you open your heart in that way and share your story and your struggle, you can help other people to do the same. And that connects you to these people that connects you to the people who have made it through the people who will need you because they're going to go through it in the future. They're going through it now. And there's so much beauty in, in all of that. I want to be very transparent and that this process for me has been a huge learning experience. When I say this process, I mean sharing a podcast, recording and creating and being consistent and finding my community, creating my community and being of service to you, being of service to the mom who struggles because she can't prepare lunch fast enough for her children in the morning, or she can't make it to every school meeting, or she feels like she can't fully be present in her relationships because there are just so many inner conversations that are telling her that she's not good enough here. She didn't do the dishes or the entrepreneur who says, I have a million different ideas, but I can't stay focused. I, I barely moved the needle in my business. I haven't even earned a dime. We all have those conversations with ourselves. But when we get to a point where we can stop and say, oh, I recognize, I recognize that conversation. I recognize and hear you telling me I'm not good enough for this or I can't do this, there are always moments that we start to tell ourselves negative things. But when we are able to stop and flip that conversation, it's so, so helpful in identifying, okay, this needs to stop. I deserve to be happy. I deserve wonderful things. And, and we stop pulling that subconscious negativity towards us. So I want to close out with a really awesome line from Keith Urban's song called Little Bit of Everything. And the line is, I don't need a whole lot of everything. Oh, sorry. I don't need a whole lot of anything. I just want a little bit of everything. And that little bit of everything is that little bit of joy in everything that you experience. For me, it's finding that piece of of goodness and happiness and that lesson in everything that we experience so that no matter what happens, it's something good. It's something that we can take away from this moment, uh, this struggle. And once we flip that conversation, we realize this is good. This is okay. And I can have and deserve all good things. Because I was put on this earth for a reason. And in order for me to create a good impact and a positive impact, not only for myself, but for the people around me, and then ultimately a wider and greater circle, creating that ripple effect for the entire world starts with seeing and understanding that I do deserve everything. If you have found any kind of value in what I've shared today, I would so appreciate you subscribing and sharing your feedback by rating the show on Apple or on Spotify and letting me know that this did resonate with you, that you took something out of this. It would mean so much to me. Regardless, I'm here for you and I want to continue to share light and beauty. And thank you so much again. I hope you have a wonderful day. Please share this if you find any value in it. And remember to subscribe. Have a good one.